So I bumped into this clip on YouTube of William Shatner taking a voiceover director to task for some terrible direction. And it's super cringy to listen to, and we're going to play it in just a moment. And so everybody seemed to think that the director was a jerk and good for Shatner for sticking it to him. And some thought that Shatner was totally out of line and just being a prima donna. But the thing is, there's so much to unpack in this clip. So on this episode, we're going to try to figure out how the conversation between Shatner and the director should have gone in a perfect world. So let's do the show. This is Prep Show, brought to you by Hollywood Camera Work. Joining me on this episode are first Nigel Levy, who has produced and directed Emmy-nominated documentaries for the BBC, Netflix, Discovery, and National Geographic, and has directed features starring Sharon Stone and Christina Ricci. He has just launched The Doc Fix to help people with documentary storytelling. And also joining me is Webb Pickersgill, who has a background as director DP of various independent films and is cinematics director at Deck Nine Games, and best known as co-director of the extremely successful Life is Strange Before the Storm, an unusually cinematic and emotional game. So I have a lot of opinions about this, so I should go last. Um, <laughs> um, I think, why don't we do this for everybody? Let's just watch the clip first, and then, uh, and then we'll talk about it, so. This is William Shatner. And I would like to invite you to take a journey with me into the 21st century. So take the next few minutes and listen very closely. You'll be amazed at what you hear. Okay? Um, can there be a little more uh, excitement in the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. All right. It sounded like really laid, you know, really super laid back. Well, uh, I'm... I'm uh, I'm saying, uh, okay, I'll, I'll try and do that. Let's do take two. <laughs> <laughs> this is William Shatner, and I would like to invite you to take a journey with me into the 21st century. So take the next few minutes and listen very closely. Um, well, uh, speak up. Uh, uh, and, and maybe you better do it, do it the way you hear it. Tell, do it for me. No, I mean, just uh, go ahead. Uh, this is William Shatner, and I would like to invite you to take a journey with me into the 21st century. So take the next few minutes and listen very closely. You'll be amazed at what you hear. Is that the way you'd like me to do it? Okay, I'll do it that way. Okay, ready. This is William Shatner, and I would like to invite you to take a journey with me into the 21st century. So take the next few minutes and listen very closely. You'll be amazed at what you hear. Okay, so is, did, I think that came pretty close. I'm sorry, are you making fun of me? Uh, no, I'm doing. I'm, uh, I'm I, no, no, I was. I believe that you asked. That was about the way you did it. I wasn't jesting. Okay. I, no, I, I'm sorry. I don't know. Maybe. No, no. I, I, I insist. Now, what I want you to do is on. Pay, uh, was that uh, satisfactory to you? No, I don't know. Maybe I should have just kept my mouth shut. I mean, no, because if your mouth were open, you'd have popped some pills in them. So do the next paragraph for me so I can get an idea of how you want it. This is uh, page two. Well, I, I don't know. I, I really don't want to because I think you, you actually have a better, much better feeling. No, I don't think I do. I would like to hear you read the second paragraph so I can, so I can do it that way. Uh, let me hear. You know, I really... No, I like it better the way you did. Ah. I insist that you show me how to do page two. Oh, I, really, I mean it. Please read play, uh, so I can get an idea of what you want. No, no, I'm going to do it the way you, you think it should go. No, I am going to do it the way you're reading it. Okay? I know you're here to see that I do it the way the company wants it, so I'm going to do it the way you read it. Well, but I don't, I don't, you know, I don't want you to do it. But you're telling me how you want me to do it. Well, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I am going to do it your way. No, there's no apology necessary. You, you know what you want. You know what you want. No, I don't. I mean, I, really don't. I mean, you come in here and you don't know what you want? Well, I come in here because I know you're a professional, I mean, and, and you know how to do it, and I'm sorry I even said anything. No, I am going to do it the way you want. Every paragraph. 
and you'll send it back to town, and you'll see whether, uh, you know, I hope it's, it will please everybody else. As long as I'm pleasing you, that's all that matters. Mr. Shander, would you please, you know, I, I don't feel right about doing it, I really well, no, you felt you wanted something done on the first paragraph. I'm trying to do what you want. Okay, let's lay down the second paragraph. So we're stopping here. So obviously, <laughs> uh, I by the way, <laughs> yeah, well, no, no. I mean, we have to squirm all the way to the end. So, I mean, so when I obviously when I put this on social media, it, it was all, yeah, oh, yeah, screw that director. Um, obviously, it's a little more nuanced. I'm coming out on Shatner's side, but I think uh, talking to you a little a little bit uh, off air, I th it sounds like both of you are coming out a little bit more on the director's side. Um, so why don't we save me to last? And um, <laughs> so, I mean, Webb, you were kind of, I mean, you're kind of the, the one who jumped, jumped in with the, like the strongest opinion in our, in our chat with like that, <laughs> that was not professional of Shatner. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, so I get it, right? We've all been there. It's like you give the direction, it's not the best. Um, but, and you know, he, in, all right, in all fairness, uh, William did it spot on to how he asked. Like it was like even the the little nuances like he read it exactly the way he wanted, <laughs> but it sucked. <laughs> to his credit, but it sucked, right? So yeah. Um. So okay. When I first heard that, I was like, okay, he is playing with him. Like it was like, okay, this is you know young fish. Let's play with the young fish. Um. And, but then he he called him out on it. I was like, yeah, go director. You said, are you playing with me? And he was like, no, no, no. I'm being very serious. That's where I was like, okay, how long? How far are you going to take this, William? And that that's where it, it started falling apart for me because I could get it, you know, young director, let's dig him a little bit. Let's have a little bit of fun, but then let's come back to professional. Right. Um, and let, let's get the job done. Now, of course, this is William Shatner. He doesn't have to take this gig, you know, like he doesn't necessarily, I think would need the money um, or any of those reasons. He doesn't have to prove himself to anybody anymore. Mm -hmm. He is who, he, who you get, right? Like he's uh, that name. Where are you coming out on this, Nigel? I I also feel for the director. I mean, because there's a degree of professionalism that you expect from a from a presenter. Now, I'm not saying everyone gives you everything you need, but if if a if a director is saying do it like this, what they actually mean, you know, you can you can discern what they mean by their reading. You know, if you're smart enough and nice enough, you go okay. He kind of wants me to give it a bit more energy. So let me do that for him. But he didn't. He was just playing with him. You know, sure. when he said, uh, yeah. as long as I'm pleasing you, that's all I want. The director had been asking him loads of times to do it differently. So clearly he's not pleasing the director. He's just messing with the director, you know. But let's say there is a responsibility for the director to be able to deal with any personality. So I, I, I think William Shatner's at fault. Mm -hmm. But I think then you can ask yourself, what's your job as a director to work with someone who's behaving like William Shatner behaved? Because he wasn't sure. giving you anything. Yeah, I mean, that, that's so, that's part of the conversation because you, you, you do run into this, especially when they are the brand. It's like yeah. you hire, you get Morgan Freeman and now you're trying to do him differently. And it's like, just, you know, just let me do Coca-Cola. Don't change it to yeah. yellow. I mean, who are you to step in here and says that the label on the Coca-Cola should be yellow? Because, I mean, let me do the brand, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, that's what you've booked. But I'm just saying, you know, how William Shatner is, is a given. You know, that is there. So if, if this is about directing voiceover artists, the question is, how do you deal with someone who was behaving like William Shatner? If you see what I mean, it's not yeah. Shatner was right or Shatner was wrong. He was just doing what he did. And no one, I think it's very hard in the moment to turn him into someone else. You could actually, if we talk about how you deal with him, a huge yeah. part of it is the relationship. You have to have spoken to everything you talk about in the 15 minutes with him before you start is so important because that's when he sees you're professional, hmm. that you really care about what you want. You can talk about the kind of mood that you're after. You know, if you said to Shannon at the beginning, you know, we're looking to make this really exciting for people. You know, there's a sense of kind of wonder and excitement that we're trying to get out of this. You know, it, it would be great if we so could try that. So that would have been planted and that would have been baked in. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's responsibility to have those kind of conversations beforehand. And then if that would have happened to me, I would be like, I mean, like, like, how long have we got? You know, it's. I mean, it's there like, is a sign in the beginning because when he gives him the very first direction, I, I mean, admittedly, it is very, it is a very like a stereotypically bad direction because he's just like just dumping a turd of a result in the middle and just say, yeah. you know, faster, happier kind of thing. And I mean, he, Shatner kind of laughs like, that was like way over the line, but I don't know what line it was over. Was it, how dare you direct me at all? Or was it over the line in terms of just God awful direction? What do you think? Just one more thing before yeah. Webb jumps back in. Mm -hmm. What his first reading disappointed me because right at the end, he did his reading saying, you know, uh, you'll be amazed at, uh, you'll be amazed at what you hear. Okay. And he kind of, jumped into his own performance he didn't let he did. me i noticed that too because i cut so much voiceover and it's like he was leading from the talking about the take into the take and you can't cut into that i said what was he doing he was destroying his own take yeah virtually well, what are you, you what are, you're wonder. burning to say something webb go ahead <laughs> well no, it's okay no i got tons of things but uh, i do wonder though if this uh moment was edited in and of itself it, it there's moments where i'm like wait was that an edit like, was that a blend or okay. it seems like there's missing moments in between. And I think, you know, the sensationalism that you have nowadays with, you know, sure. posting something that's like, you know, um, maybe they cut it down to kind of cut out parts that would would have justified it in some way mm. just to make it look that much worse, uh, just to make it look more I sensational. I didn't pick that up but at I all, rinse. but I mean, OK, uh, OK, OK, that's so possible. I, I think he jumped into his, uh, you know, I think he jumped into it. To be honest, I have no idea why he did that, but he went, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I did hear that. So, like, so, but, but with, about, oh, go ahead. You yeah. were saying? I was going to say, getting to your point about how do you deal with this, right? Um, <laughs> so, here you are, you're a director, you've got William Shatner in the booth, and you're not getting what you want, and now he's giving you a hard time, right? Okay. <laughs> what do you do? If it were anybody else, you would say, hey, come on, let's, let's get back on the job, let's get this done. Um, and if he keeps, you know, egging you on, he'd be like, hey, we need to talk, go in the booth. You're about 30 seconds away from getting fired. Can you dial us in or not? Um, and, you know, okay, cool. Let's get back to it. You get back on with the client, assuming the client's, client's like listening on the microphone or something remotely. Um, you come back and you get it done. But, um, but it's William Shatner. He doesn't need the paycheck necessarily, right? Maybe he was doing it. You don't know the circumstance under which he's doing this job. Mm -hmm. So like saying, hey, you're going to lose this job. There's no, there's nothing that doesn't have any teeth, right? Sure. <laughs> how is that going to help justify anything? Um, although that probably how I would do it with anybody else. What do you think, Nigel? Um, I don't look, he's doing the job as a professional, isn't it? I mean, the fact of whether he needs the money, whether he doesn't need the money, um, that's kind of irrelevant. Everybody you know, rearranged just, their lives around this, right? Exactly. <laughs> I just have an expectation of quality and yeah, the point is you're dealing with a personality the question is i guess how do you deal with it in the moment because we talked about the setup with it didn't yeah. we? we talked about ideally you'd have a conversation even a five minute conversation to to prime him yeah but and then so assuming that hasn't happened because he's a junior director i'm not even sure if he's a junior director but say he is and he felt nervous or maybe shatner just walked into the booth okay and never so actually but, came. i mean so we're trying to get at what should have happened here and i mean let's just assume that that shatner is shatner and if you mess with the brand you better be bringing your a game right i mean um so what should have happened one yes totally you should have had a conversation before like um I mean, I, I must admit, I've recorded with uh, with some big stars. Um, I I recorded with one in Europe that's totally unknown in, in the U.S. He was just up for whatever. That was cool. No problem. I have worked with a pretty big actor from a pretty big TV series. I can't say the name because <laughs> he did it outside of the union. Um, and I gave him my very best piece of direction. He said, hmm, okay. And then he just did one take and it was like amazing. I mean, and then he was asking for directions. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, that was just, that was everything I wanted in a take. So I, well, we can do it again. <laughs> um, <I> could, <laughs> right? I've had a look as well sometimes, you know, I've had, um, uh, the luckiest one was I directed David Attenborough. Okay. So we did a natural history documentary. So he is uh, wonderful. 
he's an actor. You know, his brother was an actor. Mm -hmm. So he comes in and he's an old guy um, reading this. So I wrote the whole script. He doesn't write the script for voiceover. He has it written for him. So I'd written his script and actually recorded a video uh, of the film with me doing the whole script. So that's the way he, what he wanted to do. He wanted to see the whole film with his voice. So we went into an edit, you know, a dubbing suite. We, we laid the whole track down. So he's seen the film. Uh, and then he comes in quite quiet, not major stuff. And then he's sitting there quietly. And then he just gives you such a warmth of energy. It's extraordinary. The, 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 the professionalism. You see, this is the kind of thing we're talking about, professionalism. He just gave it everything. Now, obviously, he knows he's giving you David Attenborough, but the, the, the life and the energy that he gave. And I did direct a few things and made a few changes, but that was just just amazing. And then, then you have the other, you know, an unknown that, that you can direct. And again, it's really tough. Usually they've been very polite. I've never had this kind of um, uh, behavior from someone saying, that's it, are we done? But sometimes- Where do we think find- the pushback is coming from here? Okay, just a quick break to plug one of the Hollywood camera work apps, Causality Story Sequencer. This is a new kind of writing app where you develop your story visually at the same time as writing it. Gone are the days where you have to stop outlining to start writing. In Causality, you do both at the same time, all the way to the end. Download the free version with free outlining forever at hollywoodcamerawork.com and maybe you'll discover that we're onto something here. Now back to the show. Why is Shatner doing this, do you mean? Where's yeah. the pushback coming from? Like, what's well, it about? I I kind of sensed it in the way that he responded to the first direction, that I think it, it did happen in those five to ten minutes before the session. Um, either a lack thereof or a poorly um, you know, a poor introduction and a poor collaboration before the session started because he was kind of giggling right there off the start versus, you know, if it's, you know, any professional director, you're going to give them the benefit of the doubt, at least for the first couple takes until things start getting crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I kind of sense it. So you mean like that you're, you're Shatner already right. perceived that this was a hostile environment. And so, yeah. so he's like already armored up going in. Or, right, he didn't respect him out of the gate. Maybe he said some uh, weird things in the uh, introduction uh, before the session. I but I mean, maybe the director should... I mean, obviously, the director wasn't going to say this because he wouldn't have got himself caught up in this problem. <laughs> but you say, Bill, I was... You know, I'm sorry that, that that was giving you a line reading. And that's probably the worst thing I could have done as a director. But what I meant to say was... <laughs> I'd be really grateful if we could have some more energy, however clumsily I did mm. it. I mean, that's what you've got to, Jeremy, you know I mean? that's the only way back from that. So, so, Bill, I can so then I, I, I want to say what I think should have happened here, because sure. I feel like after, after he's done the first take, um, I, you have to appreciate the first take, because otherwise, act, like if, if actors are, I mean, well, I'll get to that in a moment, but it's just they, they if, if they start out off on the wrong foot and they and they kind of get the sense that um, that this is a very unappreciative environment, they just go into a tailspin, mm-hmm. where eventually they lose their talent on the way down. Uh, they know if they they're going to suck more and more as they go down in that tailspin, and every actor is afraid of it, and um, and so basically, um, well, there, there's two there's two sides to this. One is that I think, you know. Actors have a reputation for being very over over sensitive and need to be pampered, um, and and like a certain amount of babysitting. And the thing is that there's a difference between actors and every other performing artist. Like that's a musician or a screenwriter or anything else. Is that the rest of us can shield ourselves in some way? Like if you're directing, like all of us are directing because we're too chicken shit to be in front of the camera, so we're behind the camera, right? And we're trying to express we're- ourselves through somebody else because then when it sucks it's their it's their face on it <laughs> and and so so the thing is that all of us can like armor up we can kind of toughen ourselves and then get through it and put ourselves out there and even as a as a singer or like uh, giving uh, like uh, speaking at a convention or anything you can toughen yourself and you can get through it and you lose 
20% of your ability to perform. And the thing is that when actors do that, when actors armor up, they lose 90% of their talent. And that means that actors can't use that protection that all the rest of us can use. And, and that means that the director has to be their protection. The, the, the director right. has to keep them away from fights. The, you, you know, the, the director has to go out of his way, um, yeah, his or her way to, you, you know, like basically the first three or four takes, they just, they have to be pretty good. Not amazing because then the actor knows you're lying, but like you just have to be really supportive in the beginning because they're just going in naked in a way that none, the rest of us are not. And I really respect that. And so that's why it's not, it's not ego stroking. Like I talked to, to an actor who's like a, a regular on, on house and he said, you know, all that ego pampering that you give us, I mean, don't, don't feel like you're just pumping up our egos. All that good stuff that you say to us comes back when we're doing the take. It comes back as self-confidence and, and relaxed and a, like a strong presence on screen. So don't like, don't, don't, don't feel like you're, you know, you're feeding a monster by telling them good things. And I think this director did way not do that. Like, he's just, I mean, they do the take, hmm, yeah, um, okay, can you do it louder? Uh, whatever, I mean, who, who cares what the direction is at this point? And so I think that the first thing that should have happened was some kind of appreciation, like, Oh my God! I I mean, just hearing that with you know with it's like it's William Shatner, it's fucking William Shatner, amazing, um, or whatever it is. It's like I mean, that's yeah, that's really crisp. I mean, I've had luck with voiceover talent just complimenting them on the quality of their voice, which is usually true. Voiceover <laughs> talent usually has amazing voices, true. and I, I think uh, and, you're very sensitive. Pair. I think you're actually right. <laughs> okay, you're really right. Well, you're, let me I mean, let I, me I, let me say the next thing is that then because the problem. See, they're just doing a voiceover. They're doing it a vacuum. What if this has to fit into a commercial where it's like it's all happy bouncy animations, and he's just going to disappear in that? Then I think that there is an objective way to give this direction where. Um, where it's that amazing as that is, we're listening to it in a vacuum. And let's just remember that this is going into a commercial with like circus music and bouncy animals. I'm afraid it's going to disappear. How do you feel that we try a few where we just like yeah. pump it up for fuck's sake? And also, I mean, do you have any other ideas? I mean, I had another idea. I want to try one just like really deep and dramatic. I mean, or whatever. But the point is that everything is an experiment. I'm not telling you what's right. I, I'm not like just putting a standard yeah. there that you can then fail against. I'm just uh, I'm just messing with it, right? And I mean, yeah, I, I think I like the experimentation. And and that's the thing is, and and, and I mean, this is uh, this is this is what I'm trying to get at is that um, I think the worst thing you can do with an actor is create one right way that it has to be because then that becomes something that they can fail against. Um, there's only one, I think a bigger sin is contradictory direction. So they can never succeed at both of them. <laughs> um, and I just, I think this wouldn't have been difficult. And then if, if you know, if Shatner really was going to be passive aggressive and he just didn't want to be directed at all, I mean, then you can have a different kind of, of conversation. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I think it's amazing, but it's, it's amazing because you're just, you're amazing out of the gate. Um, but I don't know if it's gonna fit in. I mean, let's just play the let's let's play the previous, and there's and then everybody sees that and it's like, oh shit, yeah, I'm gonna drown. It's gonna disappear, and um, mm. and then I think he knows he knows what to do. Anyway, that's that's my angle. <laughs> so I like it. I mean, I think you're absolutely right in a way. I don't know why. I don't know why I didn't think that. I was just feeling sorry for the <laughs> sorry for the. <laughs> I mean, basically, that director wasn't capable of doing what you're describing. So I was uh, probably more describing that circumstance. Yeah. And I, and I was hopeful that William Shatner would be sympathetic. 
I know that's asking a lot of a person who I never met, but you just hope that he would be more understanding and yeah, sympathetic. But this is also the, but you're absolutely right. This is you're the thing about right. winning battles with actors. And, you know, there are actors who are assholes at every level. I mean, there are, there are actors who think that they're Shatner, right? Um, people actually, this is the weird thing. People tend to become nicer the higher up they are. I mean, it's, it's all the people, Unfair. it's further down. Unfair. Like when you, when people who are comfortable with their achievements, I mean, they're just they're the easiest yeah. person to be in a room with. And like, uh, it's just, it's no problem. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah. I mean, so the thing is that those battles are not are never worth winning with actors because you win the battle and you lose the war because the actor just disconnects from it um, and correct. does your thing and that means that you now no longer have access to all the all the machinery of acting all the I mean all that energy like and that's exactly what Shatner is doing it's like okay you want a result I'll give you a result and then it's just it's without all the things that only the actor himself can do like most actors don't even completely know how they do it like they they know how to turn it on and off but they don't really know where it's coming from and so you have an idea I want I want the part to be played this way but the majority of the stuff that actually makes the acting performance is subconscious and you can just you can steer it you can motivate it and trigger it but you, ca well, you can't make it happen in a certain way and the interesting thing about directing someone who's in a booth, because uh, I was thinking about this, is quite different from on a set, because you do have a kind of moment by moment control. Because I once took an actor from a play, and then I had to direct her on a photo shoot, and she was the difference in directing was amazing. You know, we've been on on a stage doing a whole performance, and then I just had to create a moment for a frame, and it was really interesting to her the kind of direction I was giving. It was really kind of a spontaneous thing. Try this, try that, you know, respond to this. Maybe you're thinking that and just her face would be changing until I got the frame that I wanted. And I do think there's an element of that in a booth where you are kind of hunting for a moment. Can I ask, because you, I mean, why are you going line by line? Why not just get multiple variations and then cut it and then just create the melody shoot. in editing? It was a photographic shoot. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'd gone from a theatre play to a publicity shoot okay. with the same actor, which couldn't be more extreme. That's all I'm saying. And and to me, this kind of sh uh, directing someone in the booth is kind of like closer to the photo shoot than the much closer to a photo shoot than a theatre shoot. And it's even you know you you're kind of doing a moment by moment thing uh, because when I'm directing. Um, uh, a commentary, a voiceover, I can hear the line by line as it goes by. And sometimes you just want to pick up a certain mood for a certain line. So you can let things go and then you just come back and then you just get a read. Because, you know, the guy's got Pro Tools sitting next to me. And I'm always checking with him whether we've got that, whether that'll cut, whether tonally they'll work. So I'm creating a kind of mosaic uh, or a jigsaw or whatever you call it, as much as I am a performance. But that said, sure, but you're trusting the editing like you, you're not necessarily. No, no, no. I know I've got it. Huh? I know I've got it. I know how to get mm. it. Yeah. But I don't have to get the whole, uh, in a sense, what you're doing very well. And I mean, I could be talking rubbish, but you're treating the voiceover artist as an actor to give a complete performance, it feels like. And uh, sometimes, well, yeah. I don't think I'm going to get a whole performance, but I'm getting um, uh, moments and then I just have to keep picking them but back up. But isn't that exactly it. the same as being on the set? Like, um, I mean, your life becomes infinitely easier on the set when you don't expect that the whole take has to work. Like, we're yeah. just we're just shopping for pieces. Like, we're this. I mean, this time we did it. Oh, you had something amazing on that line. Okay, good. Got it. Don't try to do it again. I mean, we got it. So. I mean, what I, you seem to have given a good holistic direction, which is like turning the actor you, you know it's very very good direction what you're talking about and honestly well can i, I can, can, can i point out where that <laughs> so so it's it's again the thing that that there's a lot going on when an actor is acting and and you can't um you can't really control all of it what was i going to say carry on while i remember my point well, I, just one more thing one more thing <laughs> yeah. to say so and had I, be, had I looked at it from a different angle, I obviously would have gone the whole 
that was fantastic. That was brilliant, Bill. You know, I love yeah, the whole thing about, you know, I'm, it's great to hear your voice and I can't believe, you know, uh, so, yeah, so, so I completely agree that I probably would have gone that way uh, instinctively. Because I mean, that's so, what I mean, so the thing is that kids. voiceover actors are always much more technical actors. And they're, and they're usually, like if this director here has only done, done voiceover in his life, then that's not as wrong. So maybe, maybe that's part of where the friction is coming from because you could record voiceover for, for 20 years and have that exact piece of direction be fine. And then you give that to an actual yeah. film actor and then, and then that's a problem. Because so basically, here, here was my point. Um, and it's a point that I make over and over in the, in the directing actors course as well, that the direction that works is the thing that where you, where you treat acting as something that just that runs by itself. Like the best piece of direction that you can come up with is just like one idea that just mass produces behavior. And you're not going in, lift right. the lip like this, lift this eyebrow, but it's like, um, you know, I mean, even just an even just an as if, but really all direction, like play it as if, um, you know, you really want to get out of here or whatever you can come up with. That was what he was doing. <laughs> he was playing it as if you were going to get out of here, yeah. But That's I mean, and then you get yeah, into it, like if you're pursuing as if you get into some ridiculous things that, but but the, the point, the point is that that's the direction that works where you're not micromanaging the performance. Like you're you're steering the performance from a higher level of abstraction. And and that really works because it's still, it's very specific. Like it's just one idea that turns into 10,000 behaviors that land just right at the right time. And there's no way you could do that. I mean, the puppetry that would be needed to actually do that, we can just have one idea. And if the actor's like a responsive, responsive uh, you know, um, present person who has a good imagination just and those ideas are the are those that i like to call active ideas because they're 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 active so it's just one idea and then it just uh, produces all this behavior and clearly that's uh, that's sh that where shatner comes from I think that, that and yeah, it all it all comes down to vocabulary, really. Uh, I mean, you guys are saying uh, these things already, but um, when I direct in, well, obviously directing full performance versus VO, different beasts, and then even directing narrative VO, like I do in games, compared to directing commercial, they have their differences as well. Um, but they all come down to uh, figuring out that vocabulary between you and that artist. Um, and yeah, we all have English words, but the way that you understand the word uh, might be different than the way that I have, with my life experiences, have inter internalized that. So I give a direction and it doesn't come out the way I expect. So it's not that it was wrong. It's just that wasn't the right word. It wasn't the right active word for them. So it's about, it's like, okay, hold on. That didn't come out the way I expected and that's fine. Um, let's try this. And then you try a different word. Okay, hold on. Let me try this. Okay, I see where you are now. Mm. It's we have to do that experimentation with them to understand kind of where they're coming from. But then it's you're kind also of, creating really a common frame of reference, right? Exactly. And then, but you know, that takes time. If you just walk in, hey, nice to meet you, William. Okay, let's get into this booth. It, you don't have that time to develop that versus like on a project like mine where it's like it's a feature length project you develop that rapport and then you have those kind of shortcuts that you've developed that you just know how to go to with that person to get right to that part that you need um, but it does take time to develop but that's them. why or all if, that's why all direction is front loaded like it when you're at the end of yeah. a project you're like it's just uh, hmm. and that had and that little gesture has like a ton of meeting and you get a completely different taste <laughs> right i mean it um, I, I, empathy it's not again if you take a step back it's not really the language because the language emerges when you empathize with the actor it's like everything you're talking about pair is saying understand this is how actors are thinking therefore find a way to kind of say the thing that makes that shows that you understand what they're going through do you see what i mean so the actual choice of words obviously just comes out from from your understanding of them yeah there but are, there's there also there are many different ways to say there are radically different say. tolerances for how much input people can take and i think that's well, shatter's that's part of the go ahead that's part of the empathy it's like you really have to get in their minds and say what kind of person are you what do you need 
you know, it's interesting that there is, if you can take it somewhere else, I mean, this might not be relevant, but I remember doing a um, interview, which again is a bit like recording a performance. You know, I did a three hour interview with a guy and um, he was quite bolshy and difficult. But what became interesting was like, I asked really difficult questions and he was projecting his anger at me. <laughs> but the but the object of his anger was actually the, the subject of the film. So it was great because he would come out with saying these things and he instead of saying, you don't understand me, as in I was asking really awkward, difficult questions, he said, they don't understand me. And the more angry he was getting with me, the more he was <laughs> clearly, clearly expressing what he felt like about the real problem in the background. Oh, and at the end and you of captured it, that whole charge on film, basically. Yes. And, and, uh, but I said, hate me as much as you like. I was thinking, I, I don't mind being hated because the performance is amazing. And everyone said to me afterwards, why do you let him treat you like that? And I said, because we got this amazing interview and it wasn't about me. Yes, you know, so, you. that's very so cool. I so I wouldn't, the amount of people that, that have said obnoxious things to me, but I've got good performances out of them, it's like, you won't believe. I don't set out to be obnoxious, but actually a lot of the films I make are about difficult people. I make documentaries about right. people whose problems have come because they are brilliant, but awkward. Do you know what I mean? I, so, <laughs> yeah, there's a great, uh, so what you do is, is very different than what I do, but because what you, your approach is great. Like you, um, you get them charged up and you don't take it personally because you know that they're not an actor. They're just you're just poking and finding that outlet for them to express uh, who they are with an actor and yeah, it's with like narrative therapy. style. It's like pretend stuff. I'm your mom, right? <laughs> oh, right. There is that. Absolutely. But for narrative, <clears throat> you have this negotiated um, permission with that actor. It's like we both know we're here to make something that is fairy tale. So in that permission with that actor, it's like, hey, I'm you know we're going to get to know each other, and you know that I'm not a jerk. So when I'm directing you and I start lashing out, this is not me lashing out at you. This is me getting into that headspace with you sure. so that you're along with me on the ride and we both get there together versus, you know, if you're all big and angry, or the actor's all big and angry and I come in, all right, uh, can you do that a little bit louder? Like that energy level difference is going to affect them. But if I come in and say, you really, do you think that was good? Do you have any idea how shitty that was? Go again, you know? And, and, they, and they know that in our relationship, use that. It's amazing, you know, and if they, it's amazing yeah. how how actors respond to the director's energy. Yeah. But from the outside, you record that and it's like, "Oh my god, this guy's yelling at the actor. Oh my god, was but from the outside that's what it looks like, but what people don't realize is that in the right circumstances, that's a negotiated thing and that helps everybody. It helps the actor get where they need to and it helps the director make sure that they're getting there. Uh, but yeah, you record it, you put it on YouTube and now it looks like, you know, uh, the Christian Bale thing where the guy, you know, it could have been something on set that was legit. You just don't know. I am learning a lot actually from this. <laughs> I don't know how people watch. Cool, it. good. No, well, I, I mean, no, we all came here because we weren't clear on what the truth was about this. Because I, I have noticed, I mean, genuinely, because I move between documentary and drama and I'm doing all kinds of, getting all kinds of performance, but I kind of end up um, on one kind of method for getting a performance. And, it, and I have to recalibrate with an actor because I'm treating them like a real, like you say, like, like we're not working together at first. They're not in on it. Like, like you say, an actor is in on the process. Mm -hmm. And if I'm coming from a documentary, I am much more, dare I say, manipulative. Right. Because they, they, they have just, to be. Yeah, because they don't know that they're, I'm getting a performance out of them. Right. They're just getting into a state where they're talking. And I've just told them, to, to, I, I've just, I've adjusted their performance without them knowing they're giving a performance. Yeah, actors really. have no problem having that meta yeah, awareness exactly. that and this I is a game to, we're playing. And I think I think <clears> the <throat> biggest lesson I ever learned was was in that theatre job I did. I went there from documentary and I worked for three months in the theatre in order to sensitise myself to performance. Do you know, genuinely to kind of like, let's see what happens over two months rehearsal and a month's performance. And I remember mm. I went to... Um, uh, I went to see the ice storm. You can, so that dates it. The ice storm was in the cinema. And I remember watching, I was so sensitized to performance in a way I'd never been before. I watched the ice storm, which is an astonishing film. And I remember seeing Joan Allen uh, break down in a bathroom in the key, you know, the key party scene. She was sitting in the bathroom breaking down. 
and I could absolutely see the performance 100%. I was not taken in. I could almost see the cameras and the lights and the crew out of frame. But I still read that as one of the most astonishing pieces of acting I'd ever seen. Mm -hmm. Because I, because of the experience, so you have to put yourself in awkward situations. I think what we're talking about is you've got to do it to sensitize yourself to the problems of doing it. You know, so I was sure. there watching it, and yeah, I thought it was the fair. most remarkable performance I've seen, even though I can see it as a performance. It was like, and then that went, you know, after a few weeks away from that, it went. But I was at my most sensitive to an actor yeah. giving a performance. And I think my, my the, the pleasure and the danger of what I do is by moving between things, I can get really sensitized in one area. And then and then I go into another and I'm thinking, what the hell am I doing? I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not getting what I want and yeah. I'm making someone upset. It's like, this is completely wrong. Uh, but you know, you adjust, you adjust. I, I, really I think, I, I mean, there's something that's going on here that's also just purely a a difference in in expectations of like how the workflow is supposed to work because I've recorded so much like voiceover for commercials and and um, and that kind of stuff and those actors have no problem. I mean, it's the same as the actors that are in in TV commercials. It's super technical. I mean, it's just completely par for the course. It, uh, let's do one where you go up on that word and. I mean, that's exactly. just, it's the norm. I mean, those, and those actors, I mean, are, are either, I guess, okay with it or they're desensitized to it or, <laughs> but that's the name of the game. Like by the time you're shooting a commercial that has been boarded and animatic a thousand different ways and approved by clients all the way up. And I mean, it's, you know, shooting a commercial is not a, really a time to be creative. It's not, funny. it's not the same so like, as shooting a movie. Exactly. Commercials. Uh, so I had a um, project I was working on and the actor that we hire to do a narrative role, um, you know, a very performative role, his background was mostly, he had a great voice. So he had like, he had that commercial voice that everybody mm -hmm. looks for. Uh, but he also gave us, uh, uh, for the auditions, he gave us a really nice read. He really felt like that character. Uh, this was a VO only uh, gig. So when he was in the booth, we were just getting... We were getting the commercial reading on every line, even though I was trying to act, it was coming out this way. And it was, and I, we had to stop. All right, come out of the booth. Let's talk. Um, like, drop it. Like, I, I, I appreciate that you, this is your day to day gig, but I want you. I don't want the version of you that you play eight hours a day. I want you. Um, yeah. And, what you know? So let's go. Did there he together. respond to that? that did did that work for him? Yeah, it did. Um, he it he tried it on a little bit, and it was like it. He started coming out of the closet a little bit, and we're like, mm. yes, yes, keep going. Try it again. Try it again. Keep further. Keep going. It's okay. I, I mean, got that, you. But that's you, good. You but this. that's a gamble. And he finally, because he had to like he had to break <laughs> down and cry. He had to like you know completely break down and and we had to get him there. But once we got him on that path, oh, it was great. But he had to give himself permission to. To give up, yeah, this is really interesting. True, I've only it's only just come to me that I've worked with a lot of actors doing documentary. So there's another kind of strand. I, I did um, uh, Jackie Chan and Joan Chen and just various Robert Powell and and it's really interesting that that everyone is different. You know, uh, the funniest yeah. one. I'm going to say who this was, but the actor had got the actor was a presenter, so he's meant to be presenting this documentary. So we're out we we're out somewhere, and he um. He'd been to his acting teacher to teach him how to do a naturalistic piece to camera. <laughs> so, so we got this performance where he would say these words and then turn away and think and then say the next line as though he had spontaneously thought of it. And I had to kind of completely try and, and, and say, if you watch a great presenter like David Attenborough, he doesn't uh, stop and think and make it look spontaneous. He basically is in the in the role of delivering the information concisely and clearly and consistently a great thought all the way through. Whereas this guy had gone to an acting teacher to teach him to look as though he was being spontaneous, having learnt presenting lines. Trust yeah, me, it was a you can smell that ten miles away, but. But can I can I can I add a little bit to that? Because 
like for example, when I recorded, like in the, if you remember the master course, which was like way back 2003 that we recorded that, sure. um, those, the people who were doing the voice acting in there were all actors, like uh, straight up film actors. And um, I directed them like voiceover. And uh, some of them were like, oh yeah, cool. I mean, whatever you want, let's try this, let's try that. But some of, there, there were two of them who really didn't appreciate that. And somehow, I mean, somehow I didn't pick up on that, but they were really unhappy. And I, um, I mean, I, I got them all through uh, the acting coach that I, that I knew. And she told me afterwards that, you know, two of them like were really not happy at all. And I sent the course to them and they sent it back. <laughs> well, and, wow. Yeah. Um, just, one, and, more, one more thing. Oh, sorry, go yeah. on, Pat. Well, I, w I was just I was just saying that I think we're homing in on the difference here is that there really are two headspaces. There's like a professional VO headspace and then there's film acting and the VO headspace is very detailed and very technical and the acting headspace is very much finding a, like a good idea to play and then yeah. just see where it takes you. And what we have here is two people just worlds colliding. Right. Well, I, had, I mean, I mean, funnily enough, it, it's like I can only think of the things where it's gone wrong. But I did have an actress and she was basically a, uh, you know, a, a film actress voicing a documentary. And I just and it's all coming back to me now. <laughs> uh, I was with, it was me and my exec who was lovely. We worked on loads of stuff together and we just weren't getting the energy. And I don't think we ever properly solved it because this was quite a long time ago. And I don't think we'd worked out how to give. Uh, normally we'd work with voiceover uh, artists you know you go, you book them some great voices you say loud and more energy they go cool no problem at all how do you want it you know do you want this to fit in 10 seconds or 13 seconds we'll make it work and this other actress was um very gentle because it was apparently to like a gentle subject and we wanted to give more energy and we couldn't find the words a bit like that poor director and I, I, my, my excuse is saying this was a long time ago uh, but uh, maybe I'd find the language now. But I think we didn't appreciate the difference between a technical voiceover actor. I think you can get actors who are can also do technical voiceover. This is yeah. where, like a Jason this, Alexander the type, is, yeah. you, as the same person can have multiple yeah. facets. So they can be a very sensitive, you know, emotional, you know, however you describe it, a a actor. And when they're doing a voiceover job. They're the technical voiceover artists and they can hit lines and, you know, so the confusion is it's not about, you'd have to take everyone on their own terms and just see, can yeah. they take the direction I'm giving now and then adjust it? But I got it so wrong with that voice, with that actress, yeah. because we yeah. never okay. got the final energy. So let's talk about uh, really the crux of this issue of this poor video um, is <laughs> the line reading. I mean, that was the bomb ow, that started ow, the ow, fallout, ow, 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 ow. right? Yeah. So, um, so the line reading, um, it's inevitable. Um, I know, um, you know, it's like the, you'd never give a line reading, but I think that there's actually a, there's the right time and wrong time to do it. When you are a young actor, young director, don't give readings because you're only going to get back parrot and you're not going to get any nuance to it. Well, um, parrot or pushback. <laughs> right. I don't know, whatever. So, but when you are a professional, right and you've yeah. really done this um and say you know let me give you a reading um the purpose of the reading is i want you to feel what i'm trying to send you i'm not asking for this exact like inflection and whatever i'm trying to convey the emotion that i don't have a word for right now or i'm i'm losing so let me just do it and give you the the, the style the energy the feel and i want you to take a second and think about that and and internalize that and say okay, I think I understand where you're headed. Let me try it again. And what William did was he did <laughs> he did it to make fun of the guy. He's like, yeah. oh, okay, let me yeah. just parrot it back exactly to can, you. Can I, really can I just dovetail uh, something uh, yeah. off what you said here? When you say it like that, it's totally fine. And mm -hmm. and that's the thing is that it's even line readings are not a taboo. Result directing is not even bad because result directing is also <laughs> the least invasive way to direct. It's like, I'm not stepping into your head and telling you, oh, try to play this image and this memory right. from your childhood, all that bullshit. It's just, I'm trying to get it faster. Uh, what can we come up with that can yeah. make it faster, but right? Also, and, well, and, and, the and, and the thing, it's just uh, let me finish oh. the thought, um, because if you phrase it like that, 
and you put it in a box and you also communicate that you know you're kind of out of line. Like, I'm okay, I, I'm going to give you a line reading. I'm sorry about this, okay? Or, I mean, yeah. I apologize for the result. Or, I mean, it's like, I mean, it's just, I mean, okay, I'm phrasing it as a result because those are th- those are the words that I have in my head. But obviously, if you that wouldn't work as is. But the point is that just so you – what you're still then communicating is that you totally get that you have a process over there and I'm not trying to get in the middle of your process. I'm just running out of words. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what I was going to say was, was when I was working in the theater, the director, I was assistant director on this job. He's a very experienced theater director and it was almost a joke with the cast because he would give line, give line readings, but they had huge respect for him. They'd been in a, they could see he, knew every aspect of the play he knew what he wanted to get from it he was bringing huge experience and they kind of accepted and took on the line reading because they knew where it was coming from it's like you set it up the way you describe your your web your your line reading it was clear it was coming from a place of like intelligence and sensitivity and empathy Right. I'm, gave, I'm glad you brought that up there yeah. right because like if you're professional i kind of like real like william shatner I should be able to tell you this and you should be able to do all that on your own. I shouldn't have to baby you where like I've directed really um, green actors that are phenomenal actors. They just don't have you know, all those skills yet. And I have to preface that. And I think it deserves that preface, right? To say, Hey, I'm going to do this to you, but here's how you handle it, internalize it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but again, that's a that spectrum. Like by the time you guys at that professional level, you should be able to say, Hey, here, let me give you this idea, blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay. I see where you're going. Let me give it another shot. Versus the disingenuous uh, version, just to just to yeah. knife the guy. Uh, so I guy. mean, that leaves the question is because I think you I think you're right about that. I think no matter how unhappy William Shatner is about this, I think it's still. I mean, I've gone out of my way to defend him, but it's still the wrong reaction. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, but, the, for the sole reason is that yeah. okay. So he had the moment, he laughed, he did his thing. Are you joking with me? No, I'm being serious. Okay, maybe a little. But then he would not let up. No, I'm going to do this exactly the way you want me to. Okay, that was- That's too much. Yeah, That is too much. It's like, okay, I had my joke. I'm sorry, cool. Let's get back to it. The director said, I don't want you to do it. Yeah, he was literally- No, 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 it's too late. You said it first. (laughs) Exactly. That's like, where is the logic behind this? You know? Yeah. Yeah. But so so that means that there is some, I mean, unless Shatner just really doesn't want to be directed at all. And maybe he doesn't want to. I mean, I maybe it's like I'm fucking William Shatner. I mean, stop, stop, uh, stop messing with the brand. Yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> and in that case, I guess any director in that place, I mean, because, I mean, there are other ways that you could get it. Like, let's imagine that the director was like trying to do everything that we said here. It's like being like really sensitive to his process, but also giving super vague, unactionable direction. He could get just as irritated at that. Yeah. Um, there's some animosity. It, it feels like there's something that happened before this where Shatner was already super turned off to this director already. Yeah. I was getting that sense as well. And then the director is stepping in and just giving like just a, 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 a just a whopper of of stinky direction. <laughs> Do you know what? Also, I went back and listened to the first performance Shatner gave, and apart from the fact that he cut his own performance off, I thought that'll do. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> that's that's yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm William Actually, Shatner. You worship me, right? Yeah, but actually, I felt it the opposite, which was like, yeah, it was a little low energy to me. And when he actually said, "Hey, can we yeah. bring it up?" I was like, "Okay, that sounds about right." But then I was like, "Wait, why did that fall apart?" <laughs> I mean, what I'm saying is, if I'd been in that same situation and I'd got a clean take, you think, "Well, I've got out of here with a take." Can I say <laughs> I've actually Shatner. I've been through a little bit the same here with Leonard Nimoy. I, I wasn't there on the recording, but I, I was a writer on a documentary, like a PBS documentary in 2002 or something like that. And so it's all my script and Leonard Nimoy is going to read it. And so um, my buddy, the producer, did the recording with him. And I, I assume they did the best they can. They could. But Leonard was already getting old. And it was, it sounded droopy and it sounded, it was slow. And you can hear like when people are all the own overtones and their voice are lower. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> and then I actually, I, I uh, time stretched him and pitch shifted him and harmonic corrected Leonard Nimoy to make him sound younger. <laughs> and I'm younger, you. younger and more upbeat. Like I, 
I yeah. just uh, I I pro tools I pro tooled the shit out of it and um, <laughs> fix it and post. There yeah. you go. <laughs> well, let me ask you for some help because I and this is something I have to do often uh, okay. and it's always awkward. Is when an actor thinks they've given a perfect reading, but they've stumbled on a letter or a word. You know, they do a, a flub. Yeah. And it's really, it, 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 I always find it slightly awkward because they do this reading and say, that was great. I said, yes, but you didn't. Oh, they the get stuck. Be. They get stuck on a word. The letter, a letter doesn't yeah. sound. I you think know, you, I mean, I have, I, I mean, I'm sure Webb, um, you have opinions. I mean, my opinion yeah. is that you need to change the subject. Like you need to make bigger changes so that that little thing becomes yeah, invisible. Exactly. Yeah. And what I would just say uh, sometimes is uh, just go again right away. And a lot of times they'll, they'll know why they'll just go again, no direction needed. Or I'll say, um, go again for tech, just knowing that, you know, if there's something wrong on our end, just go again. Or like you said, up her, it's just like, Hey, uh, think about this. And even though, yeah, I'm technically want to solve that problem. It gives them something active to do. So the, the next take yeah. doesn't turn flat accidentally. I mean, and that's right? the thing is that you really can't work your way away from something. You just need to go towards something else. Continually, and, yeah. And um, that's something I often find. I think I'm very sensitive to, you know, uh, listening to the, you know, the, the flubs, the coughs, the, the slightly throatiness. You know, that really kind of nuanced thing. But actually, I mean, you, you can you can take it to a certain level, and you know that it will be evened out in the mix. You you have to trust the editing. I mean, I mean, I think that's the most liberating thing, and that's whether it's voiceover or it's on the set. Is that if you if you trust that as long as the as long as the piece exists, you can put it together in some way afterwards. Like I've edited people on syllables where I have like one syllable from that take and another <laughs> syllable from that take. Yeah. And as long as you cut on consonants, you can mostly get away with it. Uh, so I'm always talking to the dubbing mixer next to me. And, and know, so, so the, so the thing is that sure, as, fine, as yeah. you're shooting, like let's say that this is narrative, um, as you're shooting, you just need to keep a, a mental record of which ones you feel like you got. And if there's enough yeah. handle on them that you can get in and out of them. And the same thing for the voiceover, like instead of trying to create variation as you're going along, just do three, four completely different versions. And then, you, and like, it's so, um, yeah. there's a, there's a directing teacher called Mark Travis who gave this a brilliant name. He calls it bracketing. And it's like, you know, like you're a photographer and you, yeah. you oh. take, like you That's get cool the exposure term. that you yeah, think is that. right. And then you get a minus one exposure and a plus one yeah. exposure. And, that uh, that is a great concept and you really should always be getting plus ones and minus ones because sometimes you end up getting the whole thing from the plus one because you were wrong on the set and the whole thing needs to play right. higher or lower i and, say give me an a and a b and yeah. usually for vo right it's like give me an a and a b and then we'll go from there sometimes they nail it in the a sometimes a was just the warm-up and b is the keeper and sometimes it's a trajectory a b and it's like oh you're heading towards something and i'll just say go for the c and it's right on the tip of the tongue they already know what it is and it comes out and sometimes you direct from there but yeah i like the the term bracketing i'm going to start using that That's it's really a, it's cool. a it's really concept. clever yeah so hey uh, i uh, did you want to you, yeah. I just want one more thing, and then I won't interrupt you, and then you can wrap up if you want to. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's just that Webb has a hard out. <clears throat> uh, uh, my um, one thing I've realized from this conversation is how little thought I've given to how I how I carry out a commentary record because I've been doing it for thirty years. I thought really, really hard early on, and I've done hundreds and hundreds of them, and it's like it's it's very interesting hearing us break this down because. You know, the big problems I've had is when I've broken out of my comfort zone, you know, and had an actor yeah. who was being an actor in a voiceover booth. And it's like something's not computing. <laughs> my usual technique isn't working. Huh. So, no, it's been fascinating. That's all. Yeah. But that's a cool distinction. I don't know if I was really completely clear on that distinction before we got here. Um, but I can now I can trace problems that comes exactly from this. So that's got to be at least half of it. And then I just think that uh, Shatner was having a, a uh, crappy day and maybe the director wasn't that nice. Yeah. Um, and then um, then you can kind of see how you get there. And he went too far. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, does, he is he a jokester. I mean, at the end. 
Well, the thing is also that that William Shatner is also a little bit of uh, he like makes uh, what's it called performance art, is that uh, <laughs> like he he can be like he could he does take jokes very far. Like you you should see him with Craig, uh, Craig Ferguson on that that show. They just go way too far with a joke. But he's also like he it's a contact sport from him. Like when he had his talk show, he would have like Rush Limbaugh on the show, and. Um, I mean, some, somebody on the show that he disagrees with a ton. Um, but I think he likes the fight. And so maybe what we're not hearing here is that the joke actually ended just right after the take. Right. And yeah. Chadner, okay, no, no, I'm just fucking with you. Okay, what do you want? Higher or lower? Just tell me what to do. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's it's possible that this whole I thing really here is, is edited. <laughs> I mean, in and the sense, be bottom of beer afterwards, you like know. the whole <laughs> the whole redeeming part was cut out, right? You yeah. hope, you hope. hope. <laughs> all his yeah. defenders were on the comments. Did you see on the YouTube thing? And they all said, "Ah, oh, Shatner showed that director. Oh, that director is such a douche." It was really interesting. They're all, yeah. You know, the team thing Shatner. is that no matter what, the director was definitely not wrong for wanting a a higher yeah. um, yes. a higher version because that's the thing. I mean, that's something that you have to learn as a as a director, I think. But you you have to learn it also like like in product development that you're you have an overview. I mean, that's your that's your job when you're in that role is that you have to make all the pieces fit together. And everybody talks with the confidence of somebody who has that overview, but none of them actually have it. And they're going to leave, like a developer is going to leave a, a, a project, an actor, a DP is going to go. So a DP will fight for something. And and you you hear that whole thing as though he understands the whole thing. And then he moves on to the next project. And now you're stuck with this turd. You're stuck with this bad, bad, bad decision that you now have to live with for years and years. And he's even forgotten it. And um, I don't know. I, I was somehow I was in the middle of looping back to a point and then. <laughs> <laughs> we have covered so much in this chat. But yeah. It's yeah. Been fun. But this is super cool. I'm glad we did this. I mean, I was nervous. Can can we talk for more than 15 minutes about this? But it turns out we could. Apparently. Yeah. This was awesome, guys. We should do this again. Yeah. Once Happy we to, uh, once yeah. we have another uh, once we have a like a, an, another <laughs> mic drop fireworks. moment on on YouTube. This yeah. was awesome. Thank you very much, Nigel, and thank you. Thank Webb. you. Yeah. yeah.